In this final lesson on linear supply functions, we're going to examine the effect of a change in the d variable in a linear supply function. The d variable, you may recall, is an indicator of the responsiveness of producers of a good or service to a change in the price. Therefore, anything that changes the responsiveness of producers can impact the d variable. In economics, we refer to responsiveness as the elasticity or, in this case, the price elasticity of supply. One factor that can change the price elasticity of a product like pizzas is how resources into or out of the same customer. In economics, we talk about the responsiveness of producers in terms of factor mobility. For example, if it becomes easier for pizza manufacturers to acquire the ingredients following an increase in price, then we would expect that producers would be more responsive to price changes. On the other hand, if the price decreases and it becomes easier for producers of pizzas to, say, lay off workers and sell off unused capital, then we can assume that the responsiveness of producers to price changes would increase. And a change in the factor mobility of pizza producers could alter the D variable in a supply equation. Let's assume, for example, that based on our original supply equation of negative 200 plus 140p, an increase in the factor mobility of pizza producers changes the supply function to quantity supplied equals negative 200 plus 200p. This is our new supply function. As we see, the D variable increased, indicating an increase in the responsiveness of producers to price changes. Using this new supply function, we can derive a new supply schedule. We'll use the same prices we have in every other example in this video lesson. For example, at a price of zero, the quantity supplied based on our new supply formula is negative 200 plus 200 times the price of zero. Clearly, the quantity intercept has remained negative 200. In other words, at a price of zero, pizza producers will still produce no pizzas. As the price increases, let's see what happens to the quantity supplied. At $2, the new quantity supplied will be 200 plus 200 times the price of 2. Negative 200 plus 400 equals 200. Notice that the quantity supplied increased by 400 pizzas when the price increased by $2. That's because our new price coefficient is 200, meaning that for every $1 increase in price, the quantity supplied increases by 200 pizzas. In our supply schedule, price is growing in increments of $2. Therefore, for every $2 increase in price, quantity supplied will increase by 400 pizzas. So let's go ahead and solve for the rest of our quantity supplied based on these prices. Here we can see that as the price of pizzas increases, the quantity supplied predictably increases. However, compared to our previous supply schedule, the quantity supplied is increasing at a faster rate than it did before. This is, of course, because the price coefficient has now increased from 140 pizzas for every dollar increase in price to 200 pizzas for every dollar increase in price. Our supply schedule has increased, although the Q intercept has remained the same at negative 200. Next, we'll see what this looks like on our supply schedule. Once again, we must calculate our P intercept to determine where our supply curve will intersect the price axis on our graph. To do so, we simply set the quantity at zero, and we solve for price. Our new price intercept will occur at a price of $1. This means that at any price below $1, the quantity supplied will be equal to zero. But as the price reaches $1, producers will begin making pizzas, and at every price beyond $1, the quantity supplied will increase. Here's how that looks on the graph next. With the price intercept of 1, we can place a point on our supply schedule at 1 and a quantity of 0. To derive our supply curve, we simply must plot one or more additional points along our supply curve. So let's go to a price of $4 and see what the quantity supplied is at $4. At $4, the quantity supplied will now be equal to 600 pizzas. As we can see, Quantity supply to $4 is greater now than it was before because producers have become more responsive to price changes. So we can put that point on our graph. 
At a price of $6, the quantity supplied will now be 1,000 pizzas. So we'll go at from $6 up to 10 and down. We now have three points on our new supply curve. If we connect these three points, what we'll have is our new supply curve. And of course, it's linear because we're dealing with linear equations here. Notice that our graph now contains three supply curves. The first supply curve, S, in red, illustrates the supply of our original uh, supply for pizzas, which was negative 200 plus 140p. The green supply curve illustrates the supply following a decrease in supply, resulting from a decrease, or sorry, an increase in wage costs for pizza. Man -made. Equals negative 300 plus one. The final supply curve, S2, illustrates the effect of an increase in factor mobility in the market for pizzas. Therefore, it is more elastic or flatter, graphically speaking, because the D variable in our supply formula increased, indicating that pizza producers became more responsive to changing prices. If there were, say, a decrease in factor mobility and pizza producers became less responsive to price changes, we would expect the D variable to fall and the supply curve would decrease or become less responsive to changes in price and therefore it becomes steeper or more vertical. In this case, though, we've seen the effect of a change in the supply as S shifted inwards from S to S1 and a change in the price elasticity of supply as S shifted outward and became flatter as producers became more responsive to changes in price. This concludes our video lecture on the linear supply functions. We have shown in this lesson how the, how the supply curve is derived from a linear supply function and how a change in a non-price determinant of supply can cause supply to shift. We've also shown how a change in the responsiveness of producers can change the steepness or the slope of the supply curve following a change in the D variable.